everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Esli and I am here with another pregnancy update. I am just genuinely, I don't even know what the, there. I don't think there is an appropriate word. It's just like so much, like I'm just amazed that we have made it this far. I, I never thought, I never thought, you know, I, I just, it's been, it's just been an amazing journey, a rough journey, but just amazing to know we're so close. But anyway, this is mostly going to be um, just a recap of um, like my Sir Claude removal. This is a shorter uh, pregnancy update than I've done. I know most of them have been like over three to four weeks, um, but in this case, it's just going to be four weeks, 36 <clears throat> I'm sorry, 35 and 36. Um, so the last time you saw me, um, I was already 35 weeks, but I was recapping up to 34. Um, right now I am at 37, I'm at about 37 and a half. Um, so I don't know if you're gonna see another update. Um, this might be the last one. At this point, the Sir Claude is out, so baby girl, free to come whenever she wants. Um, but anyway, we'll focus on, on the weeks that have passed. So 35, 36, um, nothing really different, um, like around the 35 week mark. I did want to mention one thing that I totally, I don't know why I blanked out on, um, in the last update, but it was right at the tail end, I think of 34 or maybe 33 weeks, but right at the tail end of those weeks, um, Luis and I actually went to a 4D like sonogram place. I don't think that I, I talked about it. I, I'm not sure, but we went in um, because Luis, he hasn't been allowed into any of my appointments, as y'all know. He has seen a few ultrasounds um, because whenever we go to the hospital, he is allowed into the hospital, like the times we've had to go to the emergency room. Um, but they're, they don't, you know, like they're not telling you like, oh, this is her head and this is her feet and this is, uh, you know, it's like, it's not like an interactive experience. Like they're usually just checking on baby and then that's it. Um, so I, I really wanted him to have that experience. He really wanted to have that experience. So, you know, we booked, um, it was like, it's, it's just like a special ultrasound place, has nothing to do with, um, like the hospital or, or the doctors that I go to. Um, a lot of people use those like for gender reveal parties or the, you know, cause before they used to allow you to take a bunch of people. Now you are limited to just the one person, at least the place that I went to. Um, so it was just me and, and in this case, Luis. Um, but we really got to enjoy that. He got to see her a lot. She was wiggling so much and she kept covering her face. So it was hard to get some pictures. I will pop in a couple of them here um, so that you can see my sweet girl, my beautiful sweet girl. <laughs> and, um, she was like sucking on her fingers, sucking on her toes. She had her foot up to her mouth. It was just, it was just such a cute experience, such, such. And I am so grateful that Luis got to have that um, because like I said, you know, we haven't had, aside from the fact that I haven't had a normal pregnancy, you know, I've had this complication with my cervix. Um, we're also in the middle of a pandemic. We, you know, we found out we were pregnant maybe a month or like two three weeks before you know things kind of went crazy here um in the united states where like lockdowns and there's all these precautions and all these things so it was definitely um a, like a rough because not only was our pregnancy kind of shaped by that or you know like the things that we were or were not able to do shaped by that but then on top of it you know having this complication it's just been um you know i feel like we've had very little things that we could do together and do to celebrate um so it was really nice to have that um so i would recommend that if i know that um if some of y'all are you know going through pregnancy right now and you your spouse um, or significant other hasn't been able to go with you to any appointments maybe look in your area and see if there are any ultrasound um, places that just allow uh, just one person so that you can have that experience because it was it was really sweet and it was it wasn't super expensive it wasn't cheap but it wasn't like super super expensive but it was like a nice you know it was, it was a, a nice little win basically um, but anyway I just wanted to to mention that because it like I said, it was really special and I totally blanked on that and I don't know why I forgot about that last last week or, you know, the last update. But anyway, we I didn't have any real like 
updates or issues, like nothing um, around the 35 week mark, nothing like that. Um, 36 weeks came and honestly, I was so excited to, you know, have my date, my cerclage removal, everything. Like I was just so, so, so excited about that and I kept just like going over in my head. I kept thinking, honestly, I thought I was going to go in there and have it removed and I thought I was going to go into labor like right that second. <laughs> I thought they were going to send me straight to the hospital. Um, from what I've read, it's not common. From what I've read, um, it's only between 10 to 15% of women that go into labor within 48 hours of having the cerclage removed. So the odds were like really, really small, but I just thought, you know, <laughs> I've been funneling, right? So I've been funneling down to my stitch. I only had at the last, like the last real checkup that they did with, you know, transvaginally, um, I had a little bit under a centimeter of my cervix left so I just I thought they were gonna take it out and kind of the jostling around of them taking out the stitch I thought that that was gonna send me into labor but you know obviously it didn't because here we are but um, the the hardest part um, was that I started getting really really anxious um, and I, I honestly I still am I'm very anxious about the labor um, aspect of it and so I would say maybe like two, three days before I had my cerclage removed, I was struggling. I was crying a lot. Um, I'm scared, y'all. I, I, I've mentioned this a whole bunch of times. I suffer from generalized anxiety disorder. Um, I was on medication for uh, anxiety before I got pregnant. Once I got pregnant, um, I chose to stop medication. Um, I didn't even want to look into like alternatives or things that I could take while pregnant um, because the medication I was on wasn't pregnancy safe but regardless I would have stopped it anyway I, I didn't want to put anything extra into my body unless I you know like absolutely had to um, and I was like I'm just gonna do my best and, and try really really hard um, to you know remain as calm as possible during pregnancy and uh, you know I, I think I've done well all things considered um, but the last you know like right before um, the Sir Claude removal I just you know I was struggling a lot and like I said I still am not crying as much and I think it's just because I don't know when she's coming so I don't have like I'm like I'm not building up to like a date um, but I, I have a lot of, um, and I, 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 the reason I want to share is because I'm hoping that it's normal. <laughs> um, I'm assuming it is, but I have a lot of fears about, um, about still losing her, you know? Um, like that there could be some kind of complication. Um, and I have a lot of fears about my own life. You know, I, I unfortunately read way too many statistics about, um, you know, mothers uh, that don't make it. And um, Texas, for some reason, is like one of the highest, has like one of the highest um, rates of, um, you know, mortality rates for women within like a certain time frame after birth. I can't remember like the, the, the range, but it like, I don't know why Texas has like such a high rate of that. Um, so it's just like, I, I got a lot of things like that went into my brain that like I can't get out anymore. Like it's like, I can't process those things properly. And I'm just worried in general, like, you know, I don't know how to be a mom. <laughs> I don't know how to care for a baby. I don't, you know, like, my shop has been closed since May, basically, like since I got my cerclage because obviously I wasn't able to move around um, very much, like for me to be working. Um, if you don't know, I, I own an Etsy shop. I work from home. Um, but I still, you know, because of the cerclage, didn't want to put more pressure on my cervix to be sitting and bending and doing things all day. Um, and so then I also worry like, you know, my shop has been closed. I don't know when I'm going to be able to reopen it. Um, we were fortunate that we 
don't 100% rely on that part of our income uh, but I still worry about it because it's like we're having a baby and then like our income is less and you know like all these things like and I, I'm sure it's normal I'm sure it's just you know normal part of worries that that any new mother new family has um, but it's it's weighing on my brain quite a bit and I'm trying my best to kind of process things and just kind of talk myself through things and but you know just wanted to mention that because um, I have spoken to other women um, that also have a cerv cervical cerclage or had a cervical cerclage and I know that a lot of women um, especially with you know with that um, with those kind of added issues uh, struggle a lot with that extra anxiety so I don't know I don't know I just wanted to share because I want hopefully if somebody else is watching this and you know if you're worried about similar things then you're not alone <laughs> which I you know I hope I'm not alone also but anyway so the day of my cerclage removal came which was a day the literally the day right before i turned 37 weeks so um i had my appointment on september 24th um which was thursday this past thursday today's monday by the way i think yeah today's the 28th um and so i'm um, like i said i'm about 37 and a half ish weeks right now um, so on that Thursday, I had my appointment first with my MFM doctor, and then in the afternoon, I had my cerclage removal. So the in the morning, it was actually really wonderful. I got, you know, they they did like a check on baby where they measured her. Um, she is measuring perfect to her like gestational age basically she is in the 49th percentile they estimate that she is about six pounds ten ounces just around right there um, obviously these are estimates you know we won't really know how big she is until she comes out um, but you know everything looks good they checked her heart they checked her kidneys they checked I think her liver as well they checked her breathing um, her lungs they checked the umbilical cord, you know, they, it was just like a regular where they measure her and they check everything. Everything looks great, no red flags, nothing that could cause concern. Like she is just doing so, so well, my little girl. She's just, I'm so happy. I'm so, like, that's just, regardless of what may be wrong with my body, to know that she's still baking in there and like she's baking well, <laughs> like it just makes me so happy. So she's doing great. Um, and I had my, you know, they also like kind of put these monitors on my belly to check for contractions and to check for um, her heart rate. And I sit there with like a little clicker and I have to click it every time she moves. Um, so we did that part of like my checkup. We, I've been doing that every week for the past several weeks. Um, since I think since I got into the third trimester that that's been a weekly appointment where like, you know they check like her heart rate and such um, and like me with the little movement clicker uh, and uh, so that went well that appointment was perfect we um, you know had that and Luis had take like Luis took the day off because again I was like so nervous that I didn't know if I was going to go into labor or anything. So even though he was not allowed into either one of those appointments, you know, he was outside sitting in the car, poor thing. Um, so then I, I get to my new doctor's office and um, to have the cerclage removed. And they do tell me like, oh, she's had an emergency at the hospital. So it's going to be about a 40 minute to an hour wait. And I was like, like, I was already so anxious and like, like anxious and also eager like I was just so ready to get it done that I was like oh my goodness like this is horrible I have to sit in this like waiting you know like just waiting here for hour like an extra hour but it was fine um I was taken into a room I sat there for a while and then the doctor came in and she just kind of got right to it you know um they I will say I'm gonna be quite a bit graphic I want to share my experience because I know that there are women out there that are going through this that might watch this video and I was so nervous about this procedure that I really 
I was looking up experiences as well and I was reaching out to women that have had this experience and things like that. So I just want to put out exactly what happened. So if it's like, if you're kind of squeamish or like whatever, then it might be a little too much for you to hear. But I just want to be like really, really open and, and about what happened. Um, so, you know, they, I, I always wear a dress um, to my appointment. So I just, um, you know, they just ask you to go, they just call it waist down. So you just take off your underwear and you sit there. And she came in, I was waiting for her. Um, you know, they told me to put my legs up on the little stirrups. And um, so first thing she does is they actually, they, they had to swab me first for something. And I cannot remember the name, so I'm so sorry about that. But apparently it's just like a normal thing. They check for like a certain infection. Um, which that was just like a little, you know, like a Q-tip kind of swab um, that took like half a second. That wasn't a like a big deal or anything. Um, and she went in there with the speculum. So they put the speculum in. I could feel her opening the speculum and it, I mean, it hurts, right? It's not pleasant. Um, and she was like, I can't, I can't find it. Like, hold, like, you know, she, she mentioned that she couldn't see the stitch. So I could feel her like moving the speculum like around, like to try to find where the stitch was. And holy cow, that hurt. Like I was just sitting there and honestly, y'all, obviously Luis couldn't be there. Like I said, I like, I was laying down and I just grabbed my own hands. I was just like sitting like this or like laying back like this and like holding my own hands, just squeezing my hands as tight as I could. And just like looking up at the ceiling tiles. Like I read this thing somewhere that said like, you know, any pain you feel, it was talking about contractions, but it was saying like any contraction you feel gets you closer to your baby. So I was just trying to think of that, like trying to focus on that, even though those weren't obviously contractions, but I was just trying to think like, this is just part of the process. Like this is just to get you closer to your baby. So I was just trying to focus on that and try not to think about the pain. Um, so then she takes the speculum out and then she went in manually, like with her hand, um, said, okay, I'm gonna have to feel around because I need to find it because I, I don't see it. Um, so she felt around in there and she's like, okay, I, I, I found it. So then she put the speculum back in, you know, I can feel the speculum open up again. And um, she found, like she finally saw the stitch and then um, she, there was another person in, in the, like a nurse in there with her and she asked for um, these like long, like scissor things. And I could hear her in there like cutting and it sounded like, I don't know exactly what that string, like the string that was around my cervix, I don't know what it's made out of, but it, I mean, it sounded like she was cutting metal. Like it was like the scrape of metal, you know, like if you've ever taken pliers like to a wire, like that's what it sounded like. And like that noise was like, cause she cut it and then I could hear her like cutting it again and I could hear her cut like, it wasn't like one snip and she like tore it out. Like I thought that's what it was going to be. I thought that it was going to, you know, just be like, bling. <laughs> um, but I could feel her or hear her like cutting in like different areas and pulling stuff out. And then she went in there again, she, you know, took the speculum out. Um, and then she went in there again manually to feel around to make sure that there is no piece of um, the string left. So the little wire left. Um, so not what I was expecting, um, from like other stories that I've heard, um, or seen, like for, it's, it's a lot faster, um, but I guess just because she struggled to find it, the whole thing maybe took five minutes, maybe less, um, it, it was painful, um, but it was bearable, it wasn't like I was screaming out in pain and like, oh my god, stop, or, you know, nothing like that, it was completely bearable, it was totally fine. It just, it wasn't uncomfortable and it hurt obviously quite a bit. Um, after that, like I said, I kind of expected to be like, okay, like we're going into labor. But she said, I'm only one centimeter dilated. Um, she said that she thinks, or you know, she said, I think you'll probably go into labor within the week. That's average. Most women go into labor is what she told me. Um, once the cerclage is removed within a week. But if I do make it to my next appointment, which my next appointment is on Friday when I turn 38 weeks, um, she said, if I turn, if I make it to that appointment, then she's going to schedule me to be induced. Now, being induced has nothing to do with um, 
with uh, the cerclage. Um, I have my own personal health issues, which is why my pregnancy was considered high risk to begin with, um, that it would just be safer for me and for baby girl uh, if they induce me. So that's something, and y'all, if you've been following me for a long time, you know I was diagnosed last year with something that I've never really like talked about. It's just something I don't wanna um, get into, but it's related to that. Um, so, you know, it's nothing to do with the cerclage. So we'll see. I don't know if I'm gonna make it to like a day when I'm induced. Luis is hoping and praying that I do because he had, y'all, Luis, y'all know how he is. He's like the most calm human being on this planet. He's like so chill. He's basically the opposite of me when it comes to like, you know, I'm like wound up, like concentrating on like minute things and he's just like super chill, super relaxed, big picture kind of person, which I am not. And um, he has this fear of me going into labor in the car. We watched some, ra like it was like a random like Instagram or YouTube, I don't remember where it came up, but it was a random video of a woman that didn't make it to the hospital like she, well she, they made it to the parking lot and then she gave birth like as she was like walking into the hospital a nurse had to come out and like she just was there with her legs poor girl was there like opening her legs and the baby just like plopped out and the nurse like caught the baby and he is like so so freaked out that, that i could go into labor give birth in the car that he's really hoping that i make it to the day that i'm induced as well um, so we'll see we'll see what happens i'll keep you guys updated um the best way to know about updates or anything is always on instagram i'll put my instagram handle here um so you can follow me there because if i go into labor if anything well, like I said, I have like a little labor announcement that you'll see here, um, but regardless, Instagram would be the um, first place to see any updates and any news. Uh, but that was it, y'all. She did tell me, oh, just, she did tell me that I was gonna bleed, um, that I would see some spotting, but it shouldn't be anything like too much, um, like not excessive amounts of blood. She did say if I saw like a lot of bright red blood, to go you know to call and then I would probably have to go into the hospital um, I hardly spotted I spotted um, like you know like twice maybe like that rest of that day and uh, it was a tiny bit no red blood like nothing bright um, it was just like a, you know like old like brown blood again sorry if that's TMI um, and it was just a tiny bit and that was it. I, I didn't have any issues. I had pain for the rest of the day. I felt really, really sore. It hurt to like sit down. It hurt to kind of like wiggle or bend. Um, but that was it. It was just soreness. And the next day I pretty much felt fine. Um, I actually feel better. I didn't realize that the cerclage was like almost causing me like some discomfort down there, like pretty much at all times, I guess because I was so used to it already that now that it's gone, I can tell that it's gone. I can tell that, you know, like it, it just doesn't, like I don't feel it anymore. I used to feel this like little bit of like, almost like a little scratching um, feeling in there and I just, it's gone. Um, I, I have started to feel, especially within yesterday and today, a lot of pressure on my pelvis so I can, I, I think she's coming soon, but we'll see. I don't wanna, you know, maybe she's comfortable in there and maybe the pressure is just, you know, part of being pregnant. Um, but it is nice that I feel like I can move around more now. I feel like I can breathe, y'all. Like, I just, we made it, you know, we made it. Like, I just, I don't know, I don't know. My brain is, is a lot, it's a lot. It's, I'm so happy. But anyway, that is gonna be it. I did want to mention one last thing um, because I was asked, and I feel really weird mentioning it, but I do. Um, I mean, I understand um, why I've been asked, and um, but it still feels weird and uncomfortable. But I was asked to share my ba baby registry. Luis and I did not have a obviously because of COVID. Um, we did not have a baby shower. I made a baby registry on Amazon, but honestly, the only reason I made it was as a shopping list for me and for Luis. Um, we, you know, we didn't like, we didn't do a, a virtual baby shower. We just, I don't know why. Um, I just, 
honestly, like I don't, I didn't have like the brain capacity to be thinking about that kind of stuff other than like to feel kind of sad about it, but I just didn't, you know, when you're worried about your baby, like you just want your baby to be okay. Like I feel like all the other stuff was just kind of whatever. Um, so I made it a baby registry just for our shopping purposes. I didn't make it really with the intention of sharing it with anybody. Um, we didn't share it with any family or friends or anything. Um, well, with one friend who asked, um, but you know, that was it. So um, I know a few of you, it's been like three of y'all, so it's not like it's a whole lot of y'all either, but have asked for me to share it. So I just wanted to mention it here. It's the only time I'm gonna mention it, I will link it in my description. I don't want to be like blasting like oh like get me this or you know like it's just weird and uncomfortable it's 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 weird um but i know i talk to some of y'all a lot on instagram and things so i i understand um but it's down there if anybody's interested in seeing it if you just want to take a look at it that's cool too um but yeah guys we made it we we made it we're here i'm just so I'm so grateful. I'm so, like, my heart is just so, I just, I try to think back on, like, how I felt, you know, especially those first, like, six weeks, um, right before, like, right before hitting viability, like, from when I had my cerclage to reaching viability, and how incredibly, like, what a dark place that was, um, because it's like you're just living every day waiting to lose your child you know thinking this could be the day I lose my baby to like now like the joy that I feel of like having gone through that and having made it through that and knowing that she's like doing so well I just I can't I don't know I'm just so happy I'm so grateful so so grateful um but that's, that's it. Uh, I don't, like I said, I don't think we're going to have another pregnancy update. If I have a, if I end up getting induced and they like schedule a day, um, then I might come back and, and just kind of give y'all an update on that. I'm not sure, but uh, regardless, I will see y'all on Instagram and hopefully we will have one healthy baby and one healthy mama coming back to YouTube as soon as possible. Anyway, thank you so, so much for watching this update. Thank you for keeping up with my story and with, you know, thank y'all. I really, really appreciate it. So I will talk to y'all very, very soon. Bye everyone, take care.